Hello, it's Andy here, and welcome back to my walkthrough of the 2019 Sands Holiday Hack. In previous episodes, we've identified that Elf University is under attack from an anonymous aggressor, and that they managed to extract the main password hashes. For objective number five, we're asked to do some network forensics to find the source of these attacks. But first, let's drop by the laboratory to help Sparkle Redberry, who's trying to get the Christmas cheer laser working. This is meant to be able to spread joy and happiness around the world, but it seems like a saboteur has broken into the terminal and messed up all the settings, and left a series of riddles to taunt the elves and Santa. But by following the riddles, we should be able to retrieve the correct settings and get the laser up and running again. As we're told in the intro text, we can run invoke web request without any specific parameters in order to get more information on the web API. We've got options for turning the laser on and off, checking the output level, and making adjustments to the various parameters. The attacker's calling card hinted at something in the command history. Pressing the up or down arrows just shows the history of this session, but we can use get history to show commands from previous sessions. It looks like we need to set the angle parameter to 65.5. Let's do that and try turning on the laser and check the output, but it's still too low. Taking another look at the command history, we can see some interesting text on line 9, but unfortunately it's been clipped off the screen. We can pipe the output through format table with the dash wrap parameter to show it. The mention of name equals value pairs that are shared system wide sounds like a reference to environment variables. We can check them out by switching to the EMV virtual location and, as the riddle suggests, calling get child items. We again need to explicitly request the text to be wrapped in order to read the full contents of the riddle environment variable. This suggests that the next piece of the puzzle is the most recently modified file somewhere within the etc folder structure and is probably related to a compressed file. We can list all the files in etc sorted by their last write time using the following command. This reveals a file called archive. We can examine the first line of this file with get content, whereby we can confirm that it is indeed a compressed file by the presence of pk as the first two bytes. This is known as a magic number and is part of the file format for zip archives. PowerShell's expand archive commandlet will extract the contents. There's a folder called refraction, which contains riddle and runme.elf. Riddle gives us another clue to follow. Whilst runme.elf, once we've made it executable with chmod, gives us the value for the laser's refraction setting. Let's call the web API now to set it accordingly, but we still have more parameters to find. The next riddle talks about something being in the depths of home. Well, within the current user's home directory, there's a folder called depths, which contains scores of folders and files with odd names. We need to find a file with the given MD5 hash. If it's in the depths folder and shallow, perhaps it's not within any of the subfolders, so we can feed the output of dir to the get file hash commandlet to calculate each file's md5 sum. There's nothing here that matches, so perhaps the file is buried a bit deeper after all. Adding the dash recurse option to dir causes it to search within subfolders. Adding a where object clause means we'll only see lines that match the md5 we're interested in. Finally, we just need to format the output a bit better to see the path and file name properly. We can use type to then view the contents of this file. That's the temperature setting for the laser, which we set using the web API, and the riddle continues. We need to find the text file with the longest path defined by full name. The full name property can be extracted from dir using select object. There's no built-in property which contains the length of the file path, so we have to define one ourselves and test it out on the current folder. It seems to work, so let's add some sorting by length and run again, but this time recursively searching through all folders. It looks like we have our longest file path, 
but the value is getting truncated, so we need to wrap the output. We can then use type again to view the contents. We're tasked with getting a process listing, including username, and then kill processes in a very specific order. The first part is achieved with get process, but we also need to specify the include username argument to include the username. The stop process commandlet kills processes of a given process ID, so we just need to run this four times in the right order. Once complete, our reward sounds like it's in a folder called shall in the file system root. It's not much of a reward though, just more riddle to solve. First, we need to locate an XML event log stored somewhere in ETC. This is pretty easy to achieve with a combination of DIR and select object. We have an error about permissions to a protected folder, but that's not a problem. We still find eventlog.xml in slash etc slash systemd slash system slash timers dot target dot once. We can use get content to print out the first few hundred lines so we can examine the format of these logs. It looks like the event type ID is recorded as a 32 bit integer field named ID. We can use select string to extract all of these from the logs and then group them to identify how many of each type there is. This indicates that there's just one event where the event ID equals one. So hopefully this is where the final answer to the riddle is to be found. We can use select string again to find just this one item and the context argument to show the preceding 10 lines and subsequent 1000 lines of the log file so that we can examine the event in its entirety. It doesn't take too long to identify the field which contains the correct gas mixture for the laser. We can apply this setting via the web API and after correcting a couple of typos when it doesn't work as intended, we finally get the laser up and running. Sparkle thanks us and suggests that we might want to investigate the use of Rita to help with our main objective. We're provided with some connection logs from Zeek and tasked with identifying the malware infected system. Someone has kindly already processed these logs with Rita, which generates some HTML files for viewing the resulting analysis. It tells us about possible beacons, strobes, DNS lookups, communications to or from blacklisted addresses, long connections, and user agents. Noteworthy for us is a single instance of wicker agent in the user agent field of an HTTP request. Some brief googling suggests that this might be linked to malware. Also, the host 192.168.134.130 was spotted making a very long connection, 16 and a half minutes long. This is nearly double that of the next longest connection, making it very suspicious. This could quite likely be a command and control channel. This same host has also been flagged in the beacon analysis, again exhibiting behavior that is well outside the range of any other system on the network. Beaconing refers to regular small communications and is used by malware to send status information back to the attacker or as a more subtle method of command control. But in this case, Z can read to have identified the abnormal behavior. Chances are this is our affected host and sure enough it is indeed. With the first five objectives complete, now would be a good time to check back in with Santa and inform him of our progress. He's most concerned about his turtle doves, suspecting that they were stolen and asks us to investigate their disappearance as we continue to respond to the cyber intrusion at Elf University. We'll continue our quest in the next video. I'll see you there.